these are some reed block bits for the Minimoto engine. Uh, so this plastic inlet manifold for the reed block is the standard one. This is the tuned one. I've actually ported this out a bit from where it was really rough cast. You see, you still can't really put your finger in it. And that one probably just about as amateur of my little finger, so about 12 mil. A uh, tiny little reed block. These are about 20 mil by 10 mil. So that's something that will strangle this engine. So I got this larger reed block, which has three petals over the normal two. So bigger surface area. And I thought that'd be great. But then running this on the flow bench still doesn't really flow very much. So I was looking for an alternative and I found this kit on eBay, Naraku. I don't know, is that how you pronounce it? So it's basically uh, a double reed block and this is rubber faced with fibre valves and that sits into this block that I'll then bolt onto the crankcase so it gives you much more surface area, two really large openings on the reed block. So that should flow a lot more air. Comes with a couple of carb adapters. Uh, these are metal impregnated flange with a sort of a rubber socket for the carb to fit into. So I might be able to use one of those. Uh, and also the same company I saw do some head studs, so I've got some of those as well. These are about five pounds a set. Um, that's the old Speed Fighter uh, manifold to fit on that triple block. It's a Peugeot 50 or 100 Speed Fighter, so I'm not going to use that. That can go back on eBay with those reeds. Uh, so I'm going to bolt this to bottom of the block there and that will allow me to flow a lot more air into the crankcase. So that is the reed block installed or reed manifold. I'm just going to put these sections in. Now the next problem I've got with the reed manifold is that it angles the carburetor out over sort of here. I suppose I want mine straight and also it's got the wrong flange. This is too wide to fit on there anyway so what I'm going to have to do is cut this section off. This is just aluminium that's painted black and I'm going to turn that round 90 degrees and weld it on so that I can bolt the carburetor directly to there. This is how it looks now. So the original part that was on there I cut off with a hacksaw and then it was just a flat plate so I just milled it flat to get rid of the hacksaw marks. I uh, decided to bolt the carb directly to it because that diameter hole is exactly the same as the carb. So the carb now bolts directly to it like that. And that should be job done. I'm now just about to put the barrel on. Uh, so that's got a base gasket on and some sealant. Uh, if you have done any porting on a barrel. You need to make sure you've got a nice radius, a sort of chamfer, so the ring's not going to catch anywhere. I've just put some uh, silicon grease around the bottom there just so that when I push the ring together and push it into the board I don't get any scoring. 
Um, I've drilled a hole on the side for a water fitting because that one there was in the wrong place. Uh, that was going to foul on something, can't remember what, I think it was just the case actually. Uh, so I cut that one off and I just put another uh, hole in a bit higher up and threaded it just for a waterway a bit higher up. So I'm just going to pop that barrel on there. So that is the barrel on. Uh, this has O-rings with small recesses around the studs to seal them. And obviously as you can see an O-ring for a head gasket. Uh, it would normally have that preformed O-ring for the head. But because I've surfaced the head so much I can't use that. So I'm just going to use a bead of Seekerflex 221 as a sealant. And I'm just going to bolt that on. Okay, the head is on. That all seems to have go down, gone down well. Um, the two nuts on this side are slightly more protruding because the head is a sort of a wedge shape. I don't know why that is, but it is. This is the water outlet. I need to make a fitting for that. Uh, there was a screw in fitting there, which for, is for a temperature gauge. Uh, I'll probably be running a temperature sensor for the electric water pump and another temperature sensor at the radiator at the front of the car so that I can switch the fans on. Uh, and I'll be using a small sort of PC radiator. Uh, that's the fitting for the water jacket. Uh, just about to fit the seal in here and the flywheel fan um, ignition pickup. Uh, I need to put different uh, coil mounts for the ignition pickup. That's got a couple of uh, magnetic points there. I don't know if you can see those. I've had to chamfer a bit off of that because it was fouling the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, and I need to machine all of the blades off because it doesn't need air cooling anymore. This is the flywheel set up in the lathe. Um, I'm not going to run it because it's pretty noisy, but I'll take another video halfway through and when it's done. That is about halfway cut. It is pretty noisy. There's a lot of uh, amplification of the noise coming off those fans. That will soon be gone. And that is about as much. It's going to take off. It's um, about three mil deep. So I don't think that will get in the airflow too much. Should pick up a bit of power from not churning all that air around uh, because I'll be using an electric water pump for cooling. So, next problem here will be to mount the coil. This is a standard case, and the coil mounts, let's pull that away because it's magnetised, are just behind there. And also the coil needs to be able to slide in and out for adjustment. I uh, need to get it as near to the uh, magnets as possible for the rest spark. So I might use that coil, I'm not sure yet. The next problem if I do manage to fit that is I need to extend the spark plug lead because that's a bit short. Um, so roughly that will fit on there somewhere and I would need to mount the coil, preferably this side, which will be the top of the engine because uh, the engine in the car will be at that kind of angle. So it'd be easier if I can get the coil at the top. Um, and then obviously I need to get the pull cord start on there, which I'll probably just use for running in. So I'm going to need to trim this around here. Uh, and then ideally I'd like to fit an electric start 
I don't know how well that's going to work or how easy that's going to be to work. It'd just be nice if it was on a on a button to start it rather than opening the back of the car and pulling a ripcord. Uh, that is it for now. Just about to start on some bodywork on the car.